Hello, my name's Dr. Belinda Luke, and I work for CAB International, CABI for short. And today I'm going to tell you what really bugs us at CABI and Chow. And that's the CABI stem flea beetle that lives within oil seed rape. So first I'm going to tell you who CABI is. Then I'm going to explain what the problems are with the CABI stem flea beetle. I'm going to say what a micro insecticide is and how it can help us to control the CABI stem flea beetle. And I'm going to tell you about a new project and what we're planning to do to control the capistan flea beetle with micro insecticide. And then I'll just end with a summary. So CABI is a not-for-profit international organisation that provides scientific information to help solve problems in agriculture and the environment. And that can be here in the UK, but it also can also be in developing countries where we do the majority of our work. We are placed in 21 locations globally, and you'll see that quite a few of these offices are in the developing parts of the world. CABI also has a publishing arm that produces books related to agriculture and environmental scientists. So if you're interested, please do take a further look. So what's the problem with the capstan flea beetle? Well, it was reported that neonicotinoids, which is a chemical pesticide used to control capistan flea beetles, were having significant effects on uh, bee populations, not just the honeybee, but also um, other bees as well. So in 2013, the decision was made to ban most of neonicotinoid use. So that meant that the spread of the capistan flea beetle greatly increased. There was a pyrethroid, another chemical pesticide that was used to control it, but overuse of that has resulted in resistance, which means that it's not very effective in controlling the capistan flea beetle. The capistan flea beetle started in East Anglia, uh, in this red area down here, and has spread throughout the UK and has even got to Scotland now. The red areas is where it's really dangerous, uh, high numbers, and then the yellow and then the green, but it is across the UK now. And it's an estimated cost to growers of £79 million in 2019 alone. And this has meant that there is just shy of 13% reduction in the amount of oilseed rape that is grown between 2018 to 2019. Farmers can no longer risk planting oilseed rape, but they want to plant oilseed rape because it very gives very good returns on margins if they can produce it well and it's a good break crop from growing things like wheat. So the cabbage stem flea beetle causes damage by the eggs are laid in the soil. When they hatch the larvae burrow into the stem of the oilseed rape and you can see here the damage that is caused by those larvae. We have one larvae here, a further here and another up here. Some larvae can be heavily um, infected. Sorry, some stems can be heavily infected where you can get over a hundred larvae in one oil secret stem. So what can we do to help stop the cabbage stem flea beetle? So our project is to develop a micro insecticide that we hope as part of the integrated pest management program can control the cabbage stem flea beetle in the UK. But first of all, you need to understand what a mycopesticide is. So mycopesticides come under the umbrella of biopesticides. Biopesticides are split into three main categories, pheromones, microbials, and plant extracts. Pheromones are basically smells that are produced by the insects. And those insects, can, those smells, sorry, can be replicated and they can be placed in the field and they can disrupt the insects. For example, mating disruptors. We also have plant extracts, which neem oil is a common one used, especially in developing countries, which has pesticidal activities. But what we're interested in is microbials, and these can be split into further four categories, bacteria, fungi, nematodes and viruses. And I'm going to go on and talk a bit about those now. So bacteria, which is this container on the left hand side, and viruses, which is a container on the right hand side, are very good at controlling um, caterpillars, the lepidopterium pests. 
in the bottom right hand picture, you can see these two black larvae have been infected with the virus and there are two non-infected ones at the bottom. And then you also have nematodes, which are really good at controlling soil-borne pests such as slugs. Nematodes have to move through water, they're little worms. So they move through the water gaps, they find the slug or the soil-borne pest, go inside it and then multiply. So you get this mass of worms growing inside the insect. But what I'm going to talk about and what I work on is mycoinsecticides. And that's myco means fungi, insect, obviously an insect, inside means kill. So it's a fungus that kills insects. And these fungi are naturally occurring. They're naturally in the soil. And all we're doing is we're just producing them in larger quantities to help overcome the pest problem. We have three different fungi shown here. We have this white one, which is a Bavaria. The green one, which is a Metarhizium, which is currently being used in Africa to control the locusts and the outbreaks there. And then the, in, the fungus of interest for this project is an Isaria, which are these beautiful purple spores down the bottom. So how do microinsecticides work? First of all, we have to appreciate that mycoinsecticide is a living organism. So you do need to treat it with care. You do need to make sure that it doesn't get too hot. You certainly don't want to leave it out in the sun for too long. And the mycoinsecticide needs to come into contact with the insect to be able to kill it. And you can either do that through direct spray or through the insect picking up the spores either in the soil or in vegetation. Once the insect has picked up the spore, it will then start to grow on the insect. Now, most mycoinsecticides are quite specific, so they will grow on only certain insects. So for example, this one for locust control will only grow on locusts and grasses. Once inside, it then mass produces and it will eventually kill the insect. And then if the environmental parameters are good, so if there's high humidity, then you'll get these spores on the outside of the insects. And then those spores are released again to go on to kill another generation of the insects. Now you'll notice here in the middle that I've got it takes seven to 20 days to kill the insect. That's because it's a living organism and it very much depends on environmental parameters. If it's too hot, it takes longer to kill. If it's too slow, it takes longer to kill. So that's why there is a range in death. So part of this project is to develop a microinsecticide for killing the cabbage stem flea beetle. And Cabby and Chap have already been working on this for the last three or four years. And we've found a suitable isolate from the Cabby collection called Isaria fumarosa. And we have also shown that we can mass produce this isolate, which is really important if we want to make a, a product at the end of it because if you cannot mass produce it in high quantities, then you will not be able to get an economically viable product. And this project has four main outputs. It has end user engagement. We want to know what the farmer thinks. We want to know what the oil seed rape uh, industry think. You know, when the oil is produced, have they a problem with us using a microinsecticide? And we are going to develop a seed treatment. So the idea is that these the seeds of the oil seed rape are coated with the fungal spores so that when the larvae hatch from their eggs in the soil, they then pick up the, the fungus before entering into the plant and they are killed that way. And we're also going to do a foliar treatment which will target the adults. So in June, July, when the adults are around, we'll spray the crops and hope that we can kill uh, the adults so less eggs are laid into the soil. And then also another part of the project is to hand over the mass production from lab scale, which is what I'm currently doing, to a commercial partner who can produce it as a commercial product. So here's just some preliminary data that we've done. So on, on the hand, sorry, on the left hand side we have mortality, and running along the bottom we have days post infection, and we have four different coloured lines. The black and the blue lines are our our controls. One was the untreated controls, the insects were put in the container and nothing else was added. And then the tween control is our surfactant. So that's what we add to the water 
to make sure that we can suspend the spores. And then we had two concentrations of fungal spores. And you'll see if you look at the graph that the black and the blue line has very low kill rates over the course of the 16 days. However, the two green lines, which are the fungus, have good kill after about day six, where you'll have 60% kill, rising to 90% kill by day 16. So this is in the lab showing very good control. You'll notice that initially though, you don't have quick death. If we were using a chemical pesticide, you would have 80 to 90% death by day one. Biologicals take longer to kill. However, the insects stopped eating when they're infected with the fungus. So although they may not be dead, they're not eating the plants. So that's a really important part to remember. So in summary, our early data suggests that the cabbage stem flea beetle is a very good candidate for biological control and we have a nice isolate to work with. And by the development of both the seed treatment and the foliar application, we can target two parts of the life cycle of the cabbage stem flea beetle and hopefully get good control. And we already have two commercial partners on board so that we can scale up the mass production and we can also sell the product at the end of it. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. If you'd like to find out anything more about this project, please visit the CAPI website. Thank you.